What is life after financial independence? Welcome to Tia Tax Evity, where you get insights from insiders who make life better, our many clients and friends. I'm Pramod Sharma, the actuary at the Tax Evity Insurance Advisory, and when I'm not doing interviews, I help people with their financial independence by transferring risks with life and health insurance. Our guest today is Jonathan Chevro. Welcome, John. Thanks for having me back, Promote. Well, thanks for coming back. You were a guest in episode number 27, and at that time you were about a month or two away from launching the Financial Independence Hub, and you have now launched it. It's been two months now. The anniversary has passed, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with the, um, the reception that, to date. Like any website, it's version one, and uh, we have incremental improvements. Like we've added, you know, social media sharing since the launch, for example. Okay. We're a little slow to get Independence.tv rolling beyond what you saw on the on November fourth, um, but hopefully in two thousand fifteen, that uh, you'll see a little bit more of the video. But uh, certainly, there's lots of uh, content. Uh, every day, we try to put something up new, and uh, including maybe half of it from uh, guest bloggers. Because mm -hmm. I, I get a, an email every time something is posted and I look and there's more and more and more of that. So I see a lot of activity taking place. Now for people who have not had the opportunity to look at your site yet, is it another financial blog? Well, as I say in the introduction there, that uh, I don't think we, the world, does the world really need another financial blog? Or a personal finance blog or a retirement blog? Yeah, mm -hmm. I could say probably not really. Uh, there are a few differences though, as I say, we're not a personal finance blog. Personal finance is tactical. I think that financial independence is a strategic thing. Okay. Uh, we're not just Canadian or just American, we're North American in context. And we make this crucial distinction between retirement, the air quotes, and financial independence or fin dependence. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as we've discussed, I mean, we take a life cycle approach to the, the investing in the life cycle. As, as I, at Money Sense, they call it ages and stages. You know, life mm -hmm. in your 20s, 30s, up to 70s, exact, for example. The book, uh, Jamie and Sheena, the characters in the novel, um, Independence Day, uh, also go through this, in their case, 22 year saga from being age 28 to age 50, the date at which Jamie um, has decided he's going to be financially independent. So, in creating the blogs for the site, I basically settled on seven, the ages and stages. The first four, you could say, are pretty much like any other financial blog in the personal finance blogs that we've discussed. You start with uh, debt and uh, savings. You, know, you want to get out of your student loans and your credit card debt. Then you meet somebody, and next thing you know, lo and behold, you're married. Right. So it's family formation, and then with family formation comes housing. With that comes children. Then you get into the RESPs and all that kind of thing, assuming you've gotten rid of your credit card debt, mm -hmm. which is how Independence Day started, of course. Uh, and then after that, you go with this long haul, 30 years or so, of wealth accumulation. This is all the RESPs and the... Um, contributing to employer pension plans, etc., and worrying about TFSAs and the stock market mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. That is a long phase, but it doesn't go on forever. Eventually, um, you want to have what I call financial independence, what it used to be called retirement. Ultimately, the term is, is the opposite. It's the inverse or the mirror image of, of wealth accumulation. It's called decumulation. So mm -hmm. we have a number of guest bloggers on decumulation. Uh, and then we also get into this whole area of, um, I call it uh, business ownership. Um, a lot of, I mean, once upon a time I had a, a blog on a site uh, called The Wealthy Boomer. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of the second half of this seven stage life cycle. And uh, I think a lot of boomers, either through choice or involuntarily, are leaving the corporate world, but they're not ready to do nothing. So I call them boomerpreneurs. Okay. And you'll find a lot of material on, on the boomer printer. So that's in the section called business ownership, as opposed to being a salary employee. Okay. Uh, so in a way you could say quitting a job, quitting a, an employee situation, um, then you're going to transition to self-employment. That's what financial independence is. doesn't mean you're going to sit around and do nothing and watch daytime TV uh, or play bridge or golf all the time. I think the boomers are too young and vibrant for that yet, but still at some point. Um, you will eventually sell the business and uh, you go into this final stage of aging and longevity. Mm -hmm. I happen to think that uh, we're all going to live a little longer and healthier than we may have initially planned for. Uh, one of the people on the site who's in the longevity section is uh, Mark Benning of ChangeRangers.com 
And he has a great phrase which is plan for, do not plan for retirement, plan for longevity. Okay, that's interesting. And as you know, planning for longevity has is a lot of consequences, everything from annuities to interest rates to uh, your pensions, uh, factoring in inflation. If you knew, if I told you today, Promote, that you're going to live, you're, I got good news and bad news. The good news, Promote, is you're going to live to 120. The bad news is your money's going to run out at 102. <laughs> You can see the issue. Now, I know you're a, yes. ri you're a risk I, I'm guy. an actuary, so I should be telling you how long you'll live. <laughs> 93. <laughs> I don't smoke. I, I, actually, there are calculators, and some of them are on the site, where you can actually put in your numbers, as you know, and uh, so you'll do history of hearts. Uh, do you exercise every day? Do you eat properly? Do you eat junk food? Um, mm -hmm. Drinking. If you drink more than two drinks a day, you're going to knock off a few years. If you uh, in, indulge in illicit drugs, that really takes your numbers down. Uh, so those numbers go up and down, but I think generally the boomers have the message that you, um, if you're gonna live healthily and, and socially as well, um, which may include you know, church membership or um, charity or philanthropy, you know, networking being part of the world. Uh, so there, indeed, there is life after financial independence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like the, the breadth of the content that's available on your site because you've got the more traditional personal finance, but then you've also got the areas that are up and coming, the last three, the, the boomerpreneurship and the decumulation and the, the longevity I, aging. I, so I was surprised that the boomerpreneurship section was included. What was the thinking behind that? I don't actually call it boomerpreneurship. It's called okay. business ownership. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, we have people, millennials on the site, as you know, people mm -hmm. like Sean Cooper have been on your show, uh, and they're planning for financial independence in their 30s, and they're not yes. boomers. Um, but the issue is the same. I mean, he's essentially half an entrepreneur already, I think, mm -hmm. and, and soon will be. So it, it's not limited to the baby boomers. So I just casually call it boomerpreneurs because the group that I know of, and in fact, I've talked about Alan Kay being a facilitator to a group meeting in Toronto, they're meeting in a few days, um, uh, where they are actually, there were two, I, and, and, and there's a blog on this in the hub, um, Financial Independence Hub. Uh, basically, there's two groups, and in, in the, the first meeting, there were 10 of us, okay. they were all around 60-ish, one of them was 55, eight of them, were business owners, long time business owners have been done it since they were like in their 30s. For them, their issue is is to sell the business and, and, and exit strategy. Yes, uh huh. The other two were myself and the hostess. We were already long established salaried employees for 30 years or whatever the number is. Uh, and, and, and for us, the issue is decumulation and going into entrepreneurship. So you have the ones who've been longtime entrepreneurs just want to exit, mm -hmm. but they recognize it may take three or four years. Uh, plus the ones who've been longtime employees, now they finally got a taste of financial freedom, independence, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And so now they're is entering this whole world of, of what I call a boomerpreneurship if you're a boomer. Mm -hmm. If you're a millennial, I guess you call it mil millennialpreneurship. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's really interesting. Do you think it made sense to have both groups in the same meeting? Because it sounds like the issues would be quite different. Um, well, I suppose that's true. I, I think the for the, the minority of us, there were just new, newly hatched boomerpreneurs. We mm -hmm. would benefit from the expertise of those eight that were established business owners. Not so sure what's in it for the eight owners to, li <laughs> to listen to what salaried employees think about uh, starting a company. But, I th but there were other, a lot of other, it doesn't just come down to business ownership and uh, entrepreneurship. There's all these related issues about family, inheritance, uh, income splitting, uh, uh, the family office, the next generation, long-term care, aging parents. So I think when you, it, we're all people of the same age, mm -hmm. they're all very successful, highly motivated people. You could say that they're wealthy boomers too. Right. Uh, so I don't think that distinction between employment and self-employment is enough to separate the two groups. Mm -hmm. And sometimes entrepreneurs are focusing on the selling of their business, but they may not have given enough thought to what happens afterwards. Exactly. I mean, the exit strategy is, is one thing, and you know, the classic thing is you have a dot-com and you sell it for millions, and, and then what? Right. <laughs> As we said before, you know, it's, it's, uh, daytime television just isn't that good. Usually what you find is an entrepreneur takes their stake, whatever it is, and they start something else up mm -hmm. right until until they truly are unable to 
to do that kind of thing anymore. Then you get into the decumulation and old age and longevity. Mm -hmm. I thought you were semi-retired. It doesn't sound like you are. It sounds like you're doing more than ever. <laughs> well, yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, when I was in the prelude over the summer, I did read this book. I think we may have discussed it last time by, uh, um, uh, what is his name? Uh, Timothy Ferris, 4-Hour Workweek. Exactly. So mm -hmm. the irony is uh, it seems to take an 8- or 10-hour work day to get to a four-hour work week if your goal is ultimately to have passive multiple streams of internet income right? Um, and, and various paying clients. It's, it reminds me of that story I wrote about in the Money Sense about six months ago about the, the fisherman, remember? The, the fisherman, the Mexican fisherman who wants to, uh, the, he's just uh, lounging on the beach and sees his, his, his woman Maria every night and he's just having a good old time. He's like retired in his 30s, 20s. And this uh, business guy comes a big, big um, American. Um, Has to be an American. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to be an American financial guy. He says, "You know what? You know, we could uh, have you, you. You could franchise all this, and uh, and then you know, 20 years from now, you could sell the business. And then what would I be doing?" He says, "Well, then you could be on the beach with Maria, drinking and having a good time." In other words, he was already there. Yes. Uh, a friend of mine, Robert Giniak, uh, talks about his book is called "Rich as a State of Mind." Okay. In the case of the Mexican fisherman, I think that the the, the fisherman was already rich. And, yes. And the the American businessman uh, was peddling him a, a bill of goods. <laughs> Maybe it comes. It has to do with the backgrounds that people are coming from. So. He, he saw the American or the business person saw that the business could be so much more and he was focused on that rather than what the end result would be. Yeah, where, whereas Pedro, I think I, I called him in the column, <laughs> was quite happy with his two hour day. You know, he was getting close to uh, Ferris's concept. Right. One of the other things I like about the Financial Independence Hub is that you have multiple authors included there. Are you looking for more contributors? Yes, I am looking for new contributors. Ideally, you go and you look at those seven um, life cycle stages. Mm -hmm. And if you have a particular expertise in one of them, for example, wealth accumulation is a popular one or business ownership, by all means, send me word. It, it can be material that you've run on your own blog uh, or your company. Um, kind of keep our audience in mind. Send me a word file with it, you know, slightly tweaked and updated mm -hmm. uh, and a photo of yourself and I'll do a blurb and a link and et cetera. So we're not really in a position to uh, pay yet, but uh, perhaps at some point. I'll definitely send you some information. I think your site has started off really well and I'd certainly like to be part of the growth of it. Well, I know you've done some good book reviews and, uh, and I, there is a book review section. So far I've done most of them, but I would love to repurpose uh, book reviews because I think as long as, every, I, to me I want to have a place where everybody can agree that this is a book that should be read, if it's on Warren Buffett or Tony Robbins or, or whatever. And uh, there are other technical reasons for including um, uh, book reviews and, uh, and that's Amazon. I'm, I'm oh, a big, right. So I'm, I'm going to help you make more money. That's it. Okay. Yes. Well, apart from the fact I'm a big Amazon guy anyway, the, the e-books, as you know, are, 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 Amazon. are the Amazon Kindle desktop publishing, yes. uh, digital publishing system. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, Amazon is quite the company. Mm -hmm. So is Google. Yes. What's your main message for viewers today? Well, financial independence is in, in your grasp. I think for young people, the, 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 the Sean Cooper and some of the other millennials that appeared in the, in the, the hub, um, their message is basically that uh, re retirement is too far. We had one, a, a guest blog by Alan Moore in, in the United States called the XY Planning Network is his firm, and it, which is Generation X, Generation Y. Mm -hmm. And the message that he, he put in the blog is that something I actually had planted a year earlier with Roger Walner, and, uh, the Chicago financial planner, um, that financial independence is a much more accessible goal than retirement. I think young people, millennials in particular, um, they are intimidated by, or I mean, to tell a young person who's 20 that they must make sacrifices so that their older version of themselves at 75, the gray haired version shuffling around in a nursing home, can, <laughs> can have a few years of freedom. Right. It's kind of a big sacrifice to make. Um, whereas if you tell them the Sean Cooper kind of experience, that you can be have your house paid for in your mm -hmm. early 30s, and now you're right. You're, you're working at your job not to pay your mortgage or pay a landlord a rent, but because you basically want the experience and you're building up wealth for your ultimate. Uh, it could be like we said to start a new business. Because I, I can't believe any of these 
early retirement people who actually say they retire at 35 uh, are, are really going to be retired. In most cases, they end up, and as I've said before, they, they, they're still working, but their work is now writing about books about how they stopped working. And then <laughs> yes. the associated websites and associated public speaking things, all yes. of which I would call work. Yes, it's just a different kind of work and the good thing is that they don't necessarily need to do that because they were able to build financial independence already. Yeah, so they didn't retire early, they, got, they achieved financial independence early and that's what the hub is all about. Yes. What's the best way for people to reach you? Well, um, the hub itself, you can go to financialindependencehub.com mm -hmm. or just round, shorten it, a contraction, findependencehub.com gets you to the same place. It does. Yes. And here I've been typing this extra long web address. Now, if you know the name Findependence Day from the book, then yes. just go findependencehub.com and that'll get you just as fast. Okay. In fact, the actual site is Findependence Hub. All that happens when you enter Financial Independence Hub is it just goes over to Findependence Hub. Okay, we've learned even more than I expected. <laughs> Thanks for dropping by, John. Thank you very much, Pomod. Thanks for joining us for Tea at Taxevity. The Taxevity Insurance Advisory helps you understand insurance and bridges gaps in your coverage. There's no premium for peace of mind. How healthy is your insurance?